there's a concerning trend at the moment considering APIs. They're getting too expensive. Companies such as Reddit and Microsoft have increased the amount they charge just to programmatically access their data. The term API, which used to stand for Application Programming Interface, has now become Application Programming Inflation. So what is a cash-strapped developer to do? Well, I set out on a journey to build my own Reddit API. And I don't mean some knockoff version of Reddit. I mean a full-on replacement API for Reddit using the same data, but without the associated cost. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Dreams, it's impossible. There's no way to beat these company executives in their quest for greater profits. Well, there's a secret that these companies don't want you to know. And that is the World Wide Web was built on a principle of openness. Because of this principle, it's actually very difficult for companies to close the World Wide Web's open door policy. Some of the approaches used to combat the web's openness include rate limiting, IP blocking, and capture. These methods, however, just cause workarounds to be discovered, which ends up causing a technological arms race that very often has a negative impact. Okay, great, so the web is open, but what does that mean for us? Well, it means we can acquire this data from another source. This source is the web browser, which has all of this data available to it already. The only difference is this data is meant to be available to humans instead of machines. This is just a minor technicality, however, and we can use a technique to pull data out of our browsers, as a machine. This technique is called web scraping, and is the process of automating a web browser to pull data from web pages, which is exactly what we want to do. So how do we do that? Well, fortunately for us, there are tools already out there. Two of these tools are Playwright and Puppeteer, which are typically used for automated testing of web code. However, with a little imagination, we can also use these tools to automate our data collection. Let me show you how I did it. The first thing I wanted to do was to just get a browser opened up and pointed to Reddit. As both Puppeteer and Playwright come in Node.js flavors, I decided to create a new Node project. Out of our two options, I decided to go with Playwright over Puppeteer. This was due to better support for pulling out data attributes from HTML elements, which I was going to need. With the project set up, the next thing to do was determine our scraping strategy. My first goal was to pull out data from the slash r slash programming subreddit. I chose this subreddit initially because one, I am a programmer, and two, it would give me some free ideas for videos in the future. The strategy for scraping I was going to take was to pull out all of the posts for the last 24 hours. With the strategy defined, the next thing to do was to open up the hood and see what we were working with. I did this by opening up the developer menu and actually viewing the individual HTML elements. Upon doing so, I noticed that most of the information I was looking for was available in HTML attributes. This was a great start. However, I did notice two potential issues with the logged out version of the website. The first was that whenever you clicked a link, it would open up a new tab. Now, this wasn't a huge problem and I could easily work around this, but it was a little bit annoying. The second issue that I foresaw was the only way to load new content was to scroll to the bottom of the page. Whilst this is possible to do, it does add a bit of complexity as you have to constantly monitor when new resources are loaded. Fortunately, however, there was an easier solution which would solve both of these problems. Reddit still keeps around a much older version of their website at old.reddit.com. This older version of Reddit still has all the exact same data and has a lot less JavaScript for us to navigate. When opening up an inspector, I could see a lot of the data I was looking for was available in HTML attributes. Additionally, the older subreddit has a next button allowing you to easily page through posts, which would make it much easier to scroll back through the historical data. With that, I began writing the code for my scraper, pointing it to r slash programming on the old version of Reddit. Additionally, we were hitting the slash new path, which would order the posts by date. As the first goal was to retrieve any posts, I went through the process of inspecting the HTML and writing code to pull out any attributes I can by value. The attributes I cared about were the post ID, the post subreddit, the post timestamp, the author, and the URL to the post's comments. Once I had the function to get all of the posts for a page, the next step was to run this in a loop. This loop would iterate through the pages, continuously getting the posts for them. When a page contained a post that was earlier than the cutoff time, which was 24 hours before the start of the script, the loop would then exit. 
In order to iterate through the pages, the URL was taken from the next button and given to the page to go to. After the loop, I logged out the post's length just to be sure that everything was working. After that, I ran my code to give it a test, and I received 50 posts back from the scrape, which was two pages worth, telling me that everything was working as expected. With that, we had achieved some level of data capture from Reddit. However, just getting the posts wasn't enough. We really wanted to capture the user engagement as well, which is where a lot of the value provided by Reddit exists, and it's created by us. To do this, I would need to travel to each posts page and pull out all of the data there. Back in my code, I first added a filter to the posts to remove any that were older than 24 hours. I chose 24 hours as it felt like the majority of engagement came within that time frame. Then I would iterate over every post, navigate to its comments page, and pull out all of the data there. I decided to use this comments page as the source of truth, and pulled out all of the post data, including the author and the content. Then I looked at pulling the individual comments out themselves. Comments are pretty interesting when it comes to Reddit. Each comment can be thought of as a node, and each of those comments can have child nodes or child comments. This basically makes the comments a tree structure. If I took the naive approach of just pulling out all of the comments from the page, I'd actually lose the association to any other comments on there, which provides a lot of the context when it comes to Reddit. Therefore, thinking like a tree, I'd need to use a recursive algorithm to parse the comments. To achieve this, I used the following expression, which allowed me to pull only the direct descendants of an element. I could then start the recursion by using the top level element and then continue it with each subsequent comment. Then it was a case of just pulling out the data values for each comment. One thing that did catch me out was whether a comment is deleted. Whenever a comment is deleted, some of the data fields no longer exist, so I had to handle those cases. Finally, I gave it a quick run and everything was working as expected. With the comments now being parsed, that wrapped up the data scraping part of the code. Now I needed to find somewhere to actually store the data. I wanted my API to be cloud hosted eventually. However, I was also trying to do this in the lowest cost possible. This therefore presented a challenge when choosing a database. Most cloud-based solutions you typically pay a monthly fee for. And I really wanted to go for something usage-based with a very large free quota. There was one option, however. DynamoDB. If you're unaware, DynamoDB is a proprietary database by AWS. It's very low cost, usage based, and has a very generous free tier. It's also a NoSQL database and works as a key value store. But it's not like Redis. It's as far away from Redis as you could probably imagine. Because of this, the idea left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. And I thought that maybe I might find a better solution in the future. However, I didn't want to have to touch the code in my scraper if that ever happened. So I decided to decouple my database from my scraper and write to a message queue instead. To do this, I would write the data to SQS, which is a low cost message queue provided by AWS. This means the interface to write my data to would remain constant, even if I changed the database technology later on. So the first thing I needed to do was create an SQS queue. You can do this with the AWS console, but I opted to do it within Terraform, as I prefer infrastructure as code. This also means you're able to deploy this if you want to as well. You can find the link to the repo in the description down below. As my project was starting to contain more code than just the web scraper, I moved the existing code into a new directory and created a folder for the infrastructure. Next, I began writing my Terraform code, which was only a few lines long. I also made sure to add some tags so I could easily track the cost of this project. Next, it was time to run the Terraform commands to apply our infrastructure, which usually consists of Terraform init for the start to actually go ahead and initialize everything, then the Terraform plan to make sure what I was creating is what I wanted, and finally Terraform apply. After that, I went to the AWS console to check that my SQS queue was created, which it was, so everything was working correctly. The next thing to do was to integrate the scraper with the SQS queue. Back in the code for my scraper, I created a new file for adding in the SQS code and then installed the SQS client from the AWS SDK package. I then went ahead and added in the logic to send messages to the SQS queue. I made sure to use an environment variable for the queue URL so I could configure this later. Then all I had to do was import this function in the existing code and call it with my data. I also added a new timestamp to the posts which marked the time I scraped the data at. This was so I'd be able to determine whether or not new data coming in should overwrite the existing data in the database. With all of the changes made, I went ahead and ran the code to give it a test. 
As the code was expecting the cute URL from an environment variable, I made sure to set this before running. Then it was just a process of waiting for all of the pages to be scraped. Once it had completed, there was a log message telling me there was 56 messages that had been published. I then went onto the AWS console and saw that I had messages sitting on my queue. This meant everything was working correctly and had the added benefit that I would no longer lose any data whilst I was implementing the rest of the architecture. With the message queue in place, now was a good time to think about deploying the scraper to AWS. However, there was another challenge to overcome. As I was aiming to be as low cost as possible, I was going to deploy my scraper to run periodically on AWS Lambda. However, Playwright relies on an instance of Chrome in order to operate, which means I'd need a significant amount of RAM in the Lambda instance. Additionally, my scraper was more likely to be blocked by Reddit as the IP would be one related to AWS, which is a bit of a giveaway that it's an automation. Fortunately, there was another option. That option is Bright Data. Bright Data provides a number of products that are incredibly useful when it comes to web scraping, and they also happen to be sponsoring this video. I decided to use their scraping browser product, which provided two benefits. The first was that I was able to use the same code and just connect to Bright Data's running instances of Chrome, which meant I no longer had to run an instance of Chrome within AWS Lambda, which saved time and resources. The second is that their scraping browser product actually uses residential IPs, which reduces our chances of being blocked significantly. We're also able to use concurrent browsers in order to speed up this scraping process, which is very cool. To integrate with Bright Data is really easy. I just headed over to the Bright Data website and logged in with my account. Then I went ahead and clicked the add button to go ahead and create a new scraping browser resource for use with Reddit. This then provides a connection host, username and password, which is all we need. In order to integrate with Bright Data, I just needed to make a couple of changes. The first was to add in my connection URL. Now, I did this using an environment variable, as it's a good practice to not hardcode credentials. Then it was just a case of replacing how I was connecting to Chromium. Instead of creating a local instance, I would just connect over CDP. And that was all it took. Now, I could have left it there, but I wanted to make use of the concurrency. And so I changed the way I was loading the comment pages to connect to a new browser for each one. This allowed me to run multiple browsers in parallel. Next, I gave this a run to test it. I first added my connection URL to the environment variable and then gave it a run. The first time I deployed this, I noticed that the Bright Data integration was using a lot of data and taking a long time. As Bright Data charges per gigabyte of data, this initially wasn't cost effective. However, after talking to the Bright Data team, I found a number of optimizations I could make. The first was to filter any unnecessary resources from loading. This meant images, videos, CSS, and JavaScript. The next optimization I made was to change the way I was pulling out attributes. It was much quicker to pull all of the elements attributes out in one API call rather than multiple. So I created a helper function to do this and refactored some of the code. With these two changes, my performance increased and the amount of data I was processing dramatically reduced. The source code provides both the Chrome and Bright Data integration, so you can choose whichever one you like. With the scraper working, the next thing to do was to get it deployed to AWS Lambda. To do that, I quickly needed to export a handler function. Then I went and added my Terraform code. You can find the Terraform inside of the infrastructure directory under the scraper.tf. To deploy this, I went ahead and ran Terraform apply. This initiates a prompt asking for my connection URL, which will assign it to the environment variable. I pasted this in and waited for everything to complete. I could then move over to the AWS console and see that my queue was created as expected and configured how I wanted it to be. I had a CloudWatch event mapping to invoke my Lambda once every hour, and my environment variables were both configured correctly. Then I double checked my permissions, which all looked pretty good. Now all that remained was to wait for this to go ahead and run. I came back a few hours later and saw I had a number of events on my queue, which meant that everything was working as expected. Now all I had to do was write the data to DynamoDB and pull it out as an API. To do that, I needed two DynamoDB tables. The first was going to be used to store our post data. This would be stored with a partition key of the post ID, as well as a secondary index, which contains both the subreddit and the timestamp of the post. This allowed me to pull out all of the posts by subreddit and order them by their post at time. The second table would contain all of the comments for the posts and would only have the post ID as the partition key, allowing me to only pull out comments for requested posts. 
Again, I use Terraform to create both of these tables. The code for this can be found in the dynamodb.tf file in the infrastructure directory. With the tables created, I needed to write some code that would read off the message queue and write it to DynamoDB. I decided to do this in Go because I find it a little faster to work with than Node.js. The code for this is pretty simple and just involved unmarshalling from JSON and then marshalling into the correct types for DynamoDB, followed by writing them to the associated table. I then wrote some Terraform to deploy this to Lambda. Afterwards, I went and checked my DynamoDB tables to see that I had data written to them, and I checked my SQS queues to see that they were empty. So far, so good. All that remained was to create the API. To achieve this, I was also going to use AWS Lambda, but I was going to use API Gateway in front of it. This meant the API itself would be low cost and usage based. I decided to use Go again to write this code. Because of this, I was able to use a Go module that allowed me to easily route HTTP requests between a Lambda slash API gateway context. This package is the AWS Lambda Go API proxy package by the AWS Labs, which provides adapters for many different routing libraries in Go, enabling you to write code as if it was an API whilst being able to run it in a Lambda context. In order to celebrate the return of Gorilla Mux, I decided to use it for my router. I had some initial trouble getting the MUX adapter to work, so I just went ahead and used the standard HTTP adapter. For the API, I added a total of four different endpoints. The first being a GET request to the index, which would allow me to test that everything was working. The next was a GET request to slash r slash subreddit. This endpoint would act similar to the slash new page on Reddit, and would return the 25 most recent items in date descending order. This endpoint also supported pagination the same way the Reddit website did, which was to pass in a query parameter of after with the post ID that we wanted posts afterwards. This worked by pulling out the post with the ID, taking the timestamp and using that in the sort key. The final endpoint was to pull out all of a post's details by its ID. This was to simulate navigating to a page of a post. In this case, both the post details and comments would be returned. This was done by accepting a post ID in the query path and using that ID to look up both the post details and the comments from their respective tables. With our API endpoints written up, all that remained was deploying it. I took pretty much the same Terraform that I used for the loader Lambda and used it for the API Lambda. The real challenge, however, came with the API Gateway. API Gateway has a V1 and a V2. You would assume that the v2 version is what you want to use as it's more modern, but that's not really the case. Instead of proxying all endpoints to a single lambda, like you can do with the v1 gateway, it only allows you to proxy paths to individual lambdas, without giving you the actual path information. This didn't work for my use case as I was expecting the path to be in the request. So I went with the v1 gateway instead. Once the Terraform was written, I went ahead and applied it. When it was done, I headed over to the AWS console for the API gateway. Here, I clicked on my freshly created API and pulled out the gateway's domain name in order to test some requests. I first tested my slash route and got back the expected response, which was a really good start. Next, I tested the subreddit route, in which I received 25 items back. If I took the last item's ID and also sent it up with the after query parameter, I then received the next 25 items. So far, two out of two. Lastly, I tested the post details endpoint, in which I received all of the details of the post, as well as all of the comments inside of a tree structure. With that, my API was working as expected. One thing to note, the free quota for API Gateway is 1 million requests, which is much better value compared to the official Reddit API. So how much did everything cost me? Well, after running this for about three weeks, it so far has cost me around 8 cents. Most of this cost actually comes from DynamoDB, which was a tad more expensive than expected, but is a lot cheaper than running it in, say, RDS. And so the project was a success. I had managed to create my own cheaper version of the Reddit API in order to beat inflation. Now sure, it can't do everything the Reddit API can, but at least now I can doom scroll as much as I like. I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Bright Data. If you're in the market for any web scraping or proxy-based solutions, then please consider giving Bright Data a go. They were an absolute joy to work with and they have a really cool product. Otherwise, I want to give a big thank you to everyone else for watching and I'll see you on the next one.